Hello and welcome to another exercise in watercolour. The scene we've got here is the front beach at Point Lonsdale, a beach on the Bellarine Peninsula. Very scenic little spot. Start off with our pencil sketch and we only use as much as we need uh, with pencil preparation. Some artists require uh, a more detailed rendering of what they're going to do. I prefer something that looked like this in, in when I'm painting this particular scene. Fairly basic, knowing where I'm going and how I'm going to apply. This is my palette completely. I don't use all of those colours in every painting. So we'll start off here with wet our sky area a little bit. Not a lot. We're going to leave a few gaps and areas of white paper for clouds and so on. And we'll start with a little bit of manganese blue, which is a favourite of mine in the sky area. It's a nice, nice bright blue thing. I like beach scenes to be fairly bright. So we'll uh, Just apply a few, a few odd shapes here and there with the, with our squirrel hair mop. A few feathered edges here and there, and the moisture that's in the paper now will help that. I really don't know how these guys are going to turn out when I start them. Um, that's half the fun. A little bit of cobalt and a little bit of permanent rose into that into that wash just to uh, give it a bit of variety. The permanent rose tends to uh, to give the skies a bit of a lift. Again, a little bit of manganese blue just for the uh, the underwashes of the water area, and I'm leaving plenty of white paper for the simulate the foam and the breaking water on the beach. Just a break here and, and uh, you would let your painting dry so that we can get on with the next stage which is applying the uh, colour of raw sienna, maybe a touch of azo orange into it and so on, but fairly light wash just to indicate where the sand disappears into the distance. Just using the tip of the brush, describe a few a few shapes on the beach itself. And as I drag it out into the distance, I take a lot of the pigment out of the brush, just a bit of clean water. rough up some of the, the upper edges of the uh, of the area. We'll be putting some foliage along there. And uh, I'd stress that everything that you do uh, in paintings of this nature is all about suggestion. Um, there's no uh, specific trees and so on in this composition until we get closer towards the end. We're just suggesting the a bit of brightly lit sun, uh, brightly lit scenery um, along this little beach. The foreground here we've got a, a bit of underpainting of raw sienna. Here a little bit of burnt sienna being injected into the into the wash and we'll put some stronger values into that a bit later on. We're, we're just simulating what's underneath the the foliage which is in our foreground we're trying to create the impression of standing in shade and looking out into the sunlight so these are just marks indiscriminate marks made with the side of the brush here we've got a little bit of uh, ultramarine blue 
being injected into that wash. The foliage along the tops of the, um, the far ends of the beach is just a grey blue, ultramarine blue, a little bit of burnt sienna. Um, just a mixture of light and dark, different shapes. The idea is not to be too symmetrical with these things, the trees and so on, the foliage doesn't grow symmetrically. So uh, we shouldn't be trying to paint it that way. Suggestion is more important than statement. Just strengthen the blue in the water a little bit here, a little bit of cobalt, just to indicate that there are movement where the waves are, a little bit of shadow being cast. And again, the white paper that we've left is to indicate foam and the water running up onto the sand. Just adding a little bit of touch of grey green into the into the foliage area in the background. Again a little bit of variety. Just so that we're not treating all of these things the same. I never quite know how this uh, how this foliage is going to turn out. It's just largely bits and pieces with the brush. One of the important things to note is that on the right hand side of the picture is that we're trying to make a feeling of depth here so our values aren't going to be too strong. They will be a little bit more muted, they'll be a little bit softer and a little bit cooler uh, as, the, uh, as the view gets further away from us. Now we're just reinforcing some of the ground cover foliage in our foreground. We've got, uh, again, just a nondescript green mixed in with some burnt sienna. And we'll highlight that a little further a little later on. bit of cobalt blue injected into the foreground area and so on which is offset by a lot of the shapes and and uh, choice of color that we've already put into that area no particular shape this is being put in on the side of the brush to indicate foliage and so on We started to go here, mix up a very, very dark tree colour, if you like. It's uh, uh, a bit of burnt sienna, maybe some Prussian blue, maybe a bit of violet, perhaps a bit of sepia, to give us this very dark tree trunk. These moonar trees that grow in the foreground here are all virtually raggedy old different shapes and so on, very interesting to paint and so on. So we're doing this with a, a dagger brush into this very strong mix of dark here. I don't think it makes a great deal of difference as to if you start at the base of the tree and work up or the other way around. I think it's a matter of personal choice. The dagger brush gives us a few options here where we get uh, by turning the brush in your fingers you can get an, the effect of thick and thin branches and so on but the brush itself will give you that because of its shape and its construction 
They're a very good addition to have in your kit. I prefer them in a lot of ways to a conventional rigger brush. We'll add some foliage to some of these branches and so on. Not a lot, just a little bit with the side of a brush shortly. Um, we're wanting this to be the appearance of looking through these trees out onto that beach. And there are several vantage points along the along the front beach here where you can get this this uh, this type of scenery. But these trees make for make for an interesting introduction into the painting. Here I'm going back in with some a little bit of burnt sienna, perhaps a bit of orange added to it just to give it a bit of lift. But again, we're strengthening this foreground to give that appearance of looking from this shaded area and so on onto the sunlit beach. The brush that I'm using now is a, an oriental calligraphy brush, which I find pretty good for foliage and so on. They, on the side of the brush and just scuff the, scuff the colours and so on around to give a little bit of broken foliage here and there. I'm never looking for detail in these paintings, more the impression of what we're trying to uh, trying to convey. I don't think detail is necessary with this type of painting. I would rather paint the feel of the place rather than get the all of the leaves right or all of the branches right. Again, we're just reinforcing some of these these uh, areas that are closest to us. Your focus and the values of the paint that you're using will always be stronger, closer to uh, the viewing point of the painting. And obviously as the distance takes over from uh, in the middle ground and the, uh, and the background, we don't have quite as much strength in the paint value to give us that uh, aerial perspective feeling of distance. As with anything along these lines, you can overdo it. Try to uh, try to keep you keep your tree branches and so on interesting, varied, different angles. They don't all go straight up in the air. Now if we take our tape off and have a look at the painting as a whole. We've got a nice bright view of the Lonsdale Front Beach. This is our finished painting. I think the effect is that I was looking for is uh, is there. And I appreciate you, your attention, and thank you for watching.